Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Tensi, talking geeky stuff. And let's continue with another anime, manga, manga, anime creator. And this time is the god of manga himself, Osamu Tezuka. So some of you may have heard of him, or may have seen some of his creations. Like me, you probably started out seeing a lot of his anime first, before you even knew who he was. I mean, like you watched some of my previous videos about my anime experience, is uh, my parents used to work in Chinatown, and there was a local video store there. Where you know every couple of days they will rent out TV shows, anime, cartoons, all that kind of cool stuff. And in those um, bunch of videos that my mum or dad would randomly rent, there was a few of some Tezuka good stuff like um, Astro Boy, King with a White Lion. Of course, back then I was kind of too young to uh, to realize they were based off mangas. You know, back then I think a lot of people. Uh, didn't know, and and to be honest, I didn't even know that Kimba the White Lion or Jungle, em Jungle Emperor Leo and um, Astro Boy were created by the same guy. To be honest, I thought Kimba the White Lion was a, an American show. <laughs> kind of thought it was kind of like a, a Disney or a Warner Brothers, part of the Looney Tunes, you know. Moving on, I think that. His most famous creation is Astro Boy, aka Mighty Atom, and also my favorite um, creation by him. Um, he was, I think, this show was my first exposure to Osama Tezuka's creations. Because, you no, know, as a kid, I used to love all that mecha stuff, you know, Gundam, Robotech, Transformers, and you see this little kid who has all these cool powers, kind of like, uh, almost like a Superman, you know. I mean, in, in a certain way, I think that Osama Tezuka kind of create his own Superman, but, or Superboy, so to speak. And when I first saw this, I knew it was Japanese. I, I, well, I knew it was Japanese or Asian. Um, when my parents rented it out, it was dubbed in uh, Cantonese, which was um, like most of the cartoons back then. My parents rented out in the, the Chinese video store. I don't I don't remember seeing every single one, but I watched my fair share. And of course, um, later on, in the whole bunch of videos that my parents rented out, there was also Kimba the White Lion, which I actually thought that was Disney. I thought it was American made until I got older. And then I you know started getting to um, anyway. You know, back then I didn't know. It was called anime. To me, cartoons were just cartoons, just was made in different countries. So as I got older, I got into manga, got into anime. Then I found out when I was a teenager that they were based on um, mangas by Osamu Tezuka. Then, of course, my interest peaked and I started doing a lot of research about him, buying a lot of um, his comics. And I started reading some of them, um, Astro Boy comics that was... Um, Translated, there wasn't many, of course. Um, and of course, there was no internet back then, so we didn't get much choice. We just had to go off the scraps that was available, you know, in the comic shops. And I'm telling you, back then, in the late 80s, even the early 90s, there wasn't that much comic fandom as it is now. You know, it was a lot more, a lot more trendier now. You know, manga, anime, comics, all that cool stuff. So anyway, of course, uh, with Astro Boy, I remember the oh, funny thing was there was actually this comic, you know, by not just manga. I used to buy in Chinatown, in a way, when I was a teenager, um, Chinese comics. Uh, we call them manhwa. And one of my favorite kind of stories, which is the legend of the Monkey King. And they made loads of stories of that. And there was like a, a few books, black and white, of course, that had a crossover between Astro Boy and the Monkey King. I wish I had those. I mean, I don't know what happened to them. I think they got lost, you know, in time. I wish I still had them. I wasn't even sure, was it official crossover? You know, 
you know how the Chinese do things. <laughs> Sometimes it's never official, but it was fun. I mean, I couldn't read, couldn't read Chinese then. Uh, I just you know, read it, look at the pictures, thought it was fun. That was pretty cool. So anyway, moving on to his probably his next biggest creation, um, King of the White Lion, or John called Emperor Leo, and the original um, Lion King. <laughs> Anybody who probably knows the story will know that Lion King is, um, I don't want to use the word rip-off, but it was a rip-off. <laughs> I remember back then when I first saw The Lion King, the trailer, and then I went to the cinema and watched The Lion King. And I was like, wait a minute, this is so much like King of the White Lion. And King of the White Lion came out in, uh, in the 60s, late six, mid-60s, and I watched that as well. And of course, like I said, uh, I thought that was American production. But later on, as I got older, I realized it was from the creator of um, Astro Boy. So I got into the cartoons and I watched them separately because the first batch, I watched them in Cantonese, you know, uh, dubbed in Cantonese that um, my mum or dad would rent out. And then later on, you know, you can get them in uh, American. So I went to my local video store and rented a couple of few VHS of the American dubbed ones back in the early 80s, mid 80s. And yeah, and then of course, going back to the similarities between this and um, Lion King, I mean, hence, I mean, the name alone, Kimba, Simba, you know, you had a lot of the similar kind of side characters, even the similar story beats. I know that Disney kind of, I remember back then, there was a big, uh, myself, a lot of my friends, because internet wasn't that big that time, you know, in the mid 90s. So you, was, you didn't have the voices that it is today, where if something was um, being copied, you know, fans would be on the internet, Twitter, YouTube, making videos about this. And I just remember reading an article, barely remember, just just the gist of it, saying that Disney kind of didn't um, kind of didn't admit that they got inspired by Kimba. They said they got inspired by um, uh, is it Hamlet, a Shakespeare so Shakespearean story. Which is true, you know, it has it's based on Hamlet of course. But of course later in time when the internet slowly become bigger and bigger, you know, just it was got to a point where Disney just couldn't deny it anymore. They had to uh, say, yeah, you know, it was inspired by of Simon Tezuka's uh, King of the White Lion. Out of this one and Astro Boy, I never really got a chance to finish all the animes and the comics, original comics that is, especially nowadays, with, especially with um, Astro Boy, which has been reanimated so many times, movies, you know, you had the CG one that was uh, kind of Western, which I didn't mind, I thought it was quite fun. And video games, so much trend, um, franchises based on them. So moving on to Osama Tuzuka's more lesser known projects, uh, miscellaneous stuff. Like, for example, you look at the bottom middle, uh, the Metropolis. In the, I think, yes, they made a, a feature film about ooh, over 10 years ago, um, early 2000s. It was written and produced by Katsuhiro Otomo, uh, the person who created Akira. Uh, he was a big fan of um, Osama Tezuka, so it was more like a homage, a respectable project in that in that essence. Another story that I only read half is uh, Buddha, based on the life of Buddha himself and his enlightenment to become Buddha. What I read was pretty good. I can't remember the life me why I stopped, but I need to definitely uh, continue that because I got it downloaded on my tablet. Another one which I didn't read, but I read reviews, uh, really good glowing reviews, is Phoenix. I need to definitely um, check those out because I do have them, like I said, downloaded somewhere. And there's so much stuff to do now. There's so much things to watch, read. Just getting time and full-time work doesn't really help. And then on the top left, you've got Dororo. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. I know they... Um, revamped it, comic, sorry, manga, there's an anime, 
they kept a lot of the similar essence, the style very similar, but more of a modern take. You know, the characters have more kind of edgy to it. Where you look at uh, his style, very still very cartoony. You know, it's kind of very 60s style, but definitely check out the, the modern one. And you got Lost World. Never read it. While I was doing uh, this presentation, I just, well, no, when I was reading Osama Tezuka's uh, biography, this came up. So you know, I had a quick look. Looks fun. May have to check it out. It does look pretty fun. I don't think it's got anything to do with um, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, but who knows? You never know that. A lot of Westerns, a lot of the Hollywood um, studios do take some ideas from from his work. And then you go on the bottom right, here's a image of Osama Tezuka's museum. Uh, I was lucky enough to go there 2004, 16 years ago. And I can tell you it is such a cool and fantastic place to go. And if you are going to Japan anytime soon, hopefully soon when the borders open, everything settles down a bit and we are free to travel my recommendation is uh, take lots of money with you i suppose it's a lot easier now because back then me and my friend went to japan for four weeks we were in tokyo first then kyoto osaka nagasaki and uh, spent went back to tokyo for the last few days before coming back to the uk london but when we were in Osama Tezuka Museum. Man, I went in there because he's been a lifelong fan, fan of his, especially Astro Boy. My God, I geeked out. My fanboy kicked in. And even though I took I took my fair share of money that time, I had my credit card and so on, but it was like in the middle of the, the journey and we still had Nagasaki to go to. So we wanted to reserve some money, right? But you know, I had my budget and my limit, but I was willing to go a bit more, of course. Bought loads of t-shirts, figurines, figures, fridge magnets, a bit of trinkets here and there. Bought some cakes, biscuits, even some manga that I couldn't read because I was in Japanese. What else we buy? Posters, key rings, you name them, you got them. But, oh, we also got a cool um, hoodie with uh, Astro Boy in the back and yeah it was great we went there during the springtime so we saw a lot of cherry blossoms so that's definitely a good season to go to if you want to see all the cherry blossoms and just great weather weather as well but I do recommend if you're going to go there take some money with you a lot more money than you need to because you think you got enough until you go there suddenly things change and you know what while, while I was doing this video I I thought I'd try um, look for some of the stuff I purchased and yeah I think 90% of it somehow disappeared you know moving homes here and there the passage of time just seemed to just take things from me and then throws it away and you you don't know where you put them I'm telling you some of the cool stuff I got there was like limited editions and they would be worth quite a bit of money if I put them on eBay but as in saying that I didn't go there and buy all that stuff so I can sell it 15, 16 years down the line. But in a way, if you go to Japan anytime soon, hopefully next year, definitely go during the springtime. It's a great time to go to. Apart from, um, if you're in Tokyo, definitely check out Studio Ghibli Museum. And if you're traveling, go to Osaka. I can't remember what area it is is in his hometown, but it's close to Osaka. So it took us about 45 to 45 minutes to an hour to get there so it's kind of outskirts of Osaka and it's also a must for fans not just for his artwork and his manga anime just as a manga fan you should just go there and see the history of how kind of uh, manga kind of started and all the great artists that you are fans of you know Akira Toriyama for example Katsuhiro Tomo all got the inspiration from this guy and not only that, he inspired a lot of the Western um, animators and manga uh, comic artists. So yeah, definitely check uh, that out. I can't say any more good things about it. Anyway, 
moving on. I'd like to say thank you for staying this long, listening to me talk. And please give this a like if you do. Thank you again. And if you do subscribe, that's a triple thank you. <laughs> and please let me know. Have you uh, read his books? Watch any of his um, anime? Are you a fan of his characters he, that he created? Anyway, hope everyone stay safe. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Goodbye.